So another day of painting has arrived and blank canvas number eight sits before me. First of all, I just want to apologize for the resolution in the video in the first two or three minutes. It's slightly out of focus and I will certainly look into that in the future. Right, to get on with the picture, let's um, start with the colors. I have mixed up here of ultramarine, some rose madder, a bit of burnt sienna, brown, and um, a bit of purple, and uh, greens. And all together get to create a nice dark underpainting, of course using only linseed oil to give me that nice rich textured surface to work on. Today I'm going to focus on a little technique I'm going to call veining, which I'll get into more detail as we progress with the picture. For starters, I'm just going to cover the painting with the paint, with the oil paint and the linseed, and bring in the colors randomly as I go along to create some lovely, interesting textures as the painting paints itself through this session. So it's almost uh, covered up there, and uh, the linseed oil does give it a nice richness. I think here I put a little bit of yes, burnt sienna with reds in towards the the end of this um, particular cover covering of the canvas. Right, so just now I will bring up the image that I'm using as a point of reference, which I thought would be quite interesting in this exercise, and um, I will then explain my stuff as I go. Right, this will be a nice surface to work with. From here on, I'm not going to add any more paint. To the actual picture but only dip my brush in turpentine as I go along with this um, technique. So you will see now on the left there will be a little ghost picture will arrive, there it is, as a point of reference which is a sort of a, a nebula in space or energy, I don't know what exactly it is, represents but it's obviously something to do with electrical currents and connections and but be it as it may, this is going to be the point of reference, which I thought was quite a challenge to do, you know, artistically. <laughs> Just because purely it's so, yeah, different. And okay, so I'm going to start with the a few spots or connection points, which just give me some lines to work towards and to connect to. It's sort of a network of, of um, veining of veins. It's almost like veins, I suppose. And... Um, What's quite important in this process here is to, of course, keep the brush clean, keep dipping it in, um, also in um, on a cloth and keep wiping it. But to dip the brush in the turpentine with various amounts of turpentine on the brush. Therefore, if you have too much turpentine or a lot of turpentine on the brush, get a nice big area, it sort of builds up and a lot of white from underneath this become exposed. Whereas on other areas, use a little bit less turpentine again and therefore create thinner lines so to work with it in in mind it's quite important so that it does create various textures because it's quite easy to get trapped in a monotonous little circle here because the reference is let's say quite limited in a, in a way sort of so to have to take the artistic license and play with the with the effects and um, use it to make the, the surface more interesting. And it does become quite interesting if you just play around. And it's also important to be quite patient in this sort of process and enjoy it because what happens is the painting almost paints itself in a way as the turpentine and the um, linseed oil coagulate and create this sort of, mm, uh, well, mixture of colors which are um, very difficult to mix on a palette or to control. So that was enough to start off. That was the initial, let's say, out of focus session. And now there's a few more detailed shots where I go into more detailed, closer areas. And I still just dipping the paint in linseed, I mean in turpentine, and sometimes just pushing it around as it is on the canvas. 
is creating a finer network. Now, there is quite a lot of, the session took me about two hours, so I'm not filming everything, obviously. But I think you basically get the idea here, get the drift. And even there, I used an even smaller brush just to create some really interesting little, little spirals and little veins and rivers and whatever you want to call them. And um, this is just going on, this very repetitive, but yet extremely rewarding again. It's a lovely time of the painting because it's constantly creating all these unexpected surfaces and images and textures and uh, it never fails to amaze me how simple it actually is if you just let the paint do the work for you not to get too controlling or too precious or try and be too complicated because this is actually a very simple process provided you stick to some rules which I do is by keeping the brush nice and dry and clean I'd say not dry but drying it off like here for instance that was quite a thick stodgy area so now I make sure I dip my brush in the cloth as you can see there and clean off all the excess paint and this is this is a feeling thing that you develop in time and um, this is quite a sort of a homemade technique <laughs> to be honest with you so I'm still finding my way around it but I must say it is quite forgiving and extremely joyful to do pleasurable is probably the better word to use and um, yeah this is all just repetition as it goes and um, then this of course is painting because it is wet now will then go to sleep for about two weeks and be left to dry nicely and I will revisit it in about two weeks time and then start adding some of those nice reds in those white areas which I have deliberately kept now to put the reds in and everything behind it will then stay the way it is and I may darken it and it gives me a lovely um, platform to to work in and that was the end result look at the way it beautifully the colors from underneath started exposing themselves with the turpentine and the linseed oil and because I rotate the painting because you can see my painting from any if, any angle you like this just gives you a fair idea just what the end result can happen so it looks like a lot of work but it actually is it is work but it's not as complicated as it looks because I'm letting the paint help me and be my best friend and you can see the, the white areas I will then probably bring in quite a few of these more redder redder reds and let's see how we, how it develops by the time I get there for now it's sleep time for 14 days and I shall revisit you then <laughs>